Hey guys, Happy Far Woman, and here today we'll be reviewing our Brute Dasana. Now, what is it? It's supposed to be an SUV, but, like, you may be thinking, is this an off roader? No, it's supposed to be a regular SUV, and uh, yet our suspension is high 420 millimeters. Haha, uh -huh, funny, funny number. Because it has co coils, so the coils have to make it high. But then we have the torsion beam, which is kind of more flexible, I guess. But it's still front wheel drive, so I, can, I guess I can call it a off-road minivan that gets 20 miles per gallon. Like, look, I know like other minivans can get that, but like they can be offered cheaper than this. But maybe it's because of the premium premium infotainment. I could have gone for standard, and because we have a standard, standard inside, so like we could have made it standard or basic, really, and then put like standard infotainment. But no, we have more infotainment, so that's why our wheat and money this costs like around fifty thousand dollars. So, yeah, like. The Toyota Sienna has like $31,000 MSRP, and uh, this has like a $50,000, like 40, 45, 46, I don't know, $47,000 MSRP. Is it better? I don't know. Maybe it has a more better infotainment system. We could have gone for standard or like basic interior. Could have gone, got away the. Coils. We're gonna just take away the coils and put something else, like maybe double wishbone, McPherson struts, or push rods at the very max. Like instead of coils. But anyways, we have coils. So yes, let's check with the suspension. I mean, you won't see this with a minivan. So it's kind of a good off-roader, if it did have all-wheel drive. But the torsion beam in the back limits its all-wheel drive ability. So torsion beam like forces it to be only front-wheel drive, and we're stuck because we're lodged onto it. See, look, here's a problem. Either like. Most of my cars have like problem with being lodged onto something. They're too weak, or the drivetrain that they're having. This has two problems. Weakness of power. Wait, let me turn off the ESC. No, it can go. It just has a hard time because it's front wheel drive. And we got caught onto the chassis. This is quite annoying me a bit. Like, it's able to do it under the right conditions. Like, if it's set in, like, no, like, no deep places, really. Now, the rear tires are now stuck, but they can't get power. The front tires are the only ones that can get power. See, it's now stuck. Chassis is stuck onto something. Now I need to go and pull it out. Okay. See, look, we can get it out. If we pulled it out a bit. Okay, hopefully we don't get between those two. No, 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 it's forcing us. It's forcing us to go in the middle. But being in the middle is not good. You'll end up having your chassis stuck onto it. That's why you should go on the sides. Like, really, like, this has off-road potential ability, potential, potential, 
but not really because of the front wheel drive um, limits that it has. And plus it's forcing it to be going in the middle. It wants to go to the middle. And no, it cannot lift itself up. Maybe if it had if it had all wheel drive. Well I'll be like sparing like two or three miles per gallon and it'll be like way worse. So I kept it front wheel drive. I should have made it like somehow somehow we need to like find a way to like to get it lighter. Like, maybe, like, like, changing the coils and, like, replacing the coils with something else would be, like, lighter by, like, 10 pounds, I guess. So, it could go muddy, but not. Now, let's go on to the horse sand. Yeah, uh, of course, it doesn't do it. Now, please, I know that this may sound boring, like this whole, like, rep repetitive, rep I can't see it, repetitive, rep oh my god, repetition, like, of, like, events, repetitive, like, it sounds repetitive, but, like, it's kind of equal, I guess, because, like, sometimes, like, I don't want to do, like, a racing challenge with, like, the sports cars, and then do an off-road challenge with the, um, the off-roaders. I want it to be like where every car has an equal chance, more like repetitive and repetition are like different words, but they mean the same more thing. Same thing. And we have destroyed the front end of the vehicle, which should not be a problem. I mean, looks department. It looks bland, but like. When you realize it's like lifted off the ground, then you're like, okay, now something's wrong here. And there is nothing wrong. This can get, this only has 160-ish horsepower, and weighs 4,000 pounds. The Sienna, the Toyota Sienna, only weighs, weighs around 3,500 pounds, and has 300 horsepower. Would I rather drive this, which is heavier and has less power, or something that's lighter and has more power, get, gets the same ish around gas mileage. Like, this has a more comf. Okay, the rev risk. This has a more comfy. Not comfy, it's like standard. Like, this has an infotainment system. I guess we can get rid of that and get rid of like 100 or 200 pounds. Maybe, possibly. Get basic interior instead, and uh, yeah. And I guess it's it's good at mudding, surprisingly. Probably because of the coil springs. Sand, it's alright. It's not having any difficulties in the sand. Pop the tire. Now let's check if the Eskimos would like it. I know I'm like repeating the car, like, why not use Control R? Well, I would, but I would like to be in the spawn location. It's something. I don't know why I have that. It's common sense to like just respawn at the place you crashed. But there's something. Eskimos could probably like it. If it had better gas mileage, like, I don't know, around, like, like, more than 30, like, this gets under 30. Like, I don't feel, I don't know how I should feel about that, like, I feel like the car should be able to get it. I mean, not everyone's going to be, like, driving, like, at top speed. And to be honest, MVG can very, really vary on your speed. So let's say you're going like 50 miles per hour. Like, we don't know how big the gas tank is. Like, well, we actually do. 
let me respawn the car after we go on the... And my car just decided to, like, just stop working, but, like, let's check out how big it is. Now, the engine is in liters, and we have to translate, not translate, but we have to, like, get liters to, um, tuning, volume, 52 liters. Now, let's translate that to gallons, because we have MPG, not kilometers per liter. Okay, Google. What is 52.5 liters to gallons? So it's around 14, 14 gallons. So it's a 14 gallon engine. I mean gas tank. So 14 gallon. So 14 gallons is quite nice. Um, no. Now, if we go 50 miles per hour, for, oh, actually, no, well, 20 miles per gallon, so 20 miles per gallon times 14 is 280 miles. Now, if it's going 50 miles per hour, you would have to use less fuel. Now, if it goes 50 miles per hour, and it goes 20 miles per gallon, wait, let's say it goes 20 miles per hour, so, it can last around uh, 14 hours, like 25, I'm really having like a, like something with the brain, like if you go 20 miles per hour in the car and you get 20 miles per gallon, you're gonna last like 14 hours, like driving straight, 7 hours, like driving straight, like 50 miles per hour. I mean, there's, like, that's more than enough for, like, one day, I guess. Because, like, 280 miles. Like, how much does an average, like, SUV go? I, I feel like I failed and, like, succeeded. I made more powerful cars that have, like, better gas mileage. Like, they really do. Like, that Rotart T11, that had better gas mileage than this. Well, not better, but, like, similar. And you know what? It only had five seats. This has, like, I don't know, like, eight seats. Like, two more seats. Make the T11 to a red wagon. A wagon variant. And it'll have, like, better sets. But it is lighter and it has a flat floor, twin turbo. That makes like 463 horsepower. This makes like what? 160 horsepower. If anything, this is kind of embarrassing, but it's not embarrassing. But you know, I gotta accept. It's not a bad car or a good car. Every car has its downsides. I thought I could pump out more MPG out of this. But it turns out that. The car is 4,000 pounds. In its defense, it's heavy. Tires didn't need to be displayed. But I decided to make it display anyway. Um. So let's talk about 50 miles per hour and and 20 miles per gallon thing. If we can go 50 miles per hour and go 20, if it goes 50 miles per hour and has 20 miles per gallon, how much, how many hours can it last? Well, that's kind of simple, because 50 miles. So 
it'll take an hour to reach um, 50, 50 miles of travel. No. 50 miles of travel. 20 miles per gallon. So it'll take two gallons to reach two gallons. And it'll be like around seven, yeah, seven hours. See, that's the math. But sometimes they go, people go at a stop and not even like use any fuel. Now let's go mud bog, shall we? Hopefully the engine won't die on us. And surprisingly, it's a good mud bogger. It has like, it has coil suspension. I thought this was going to be bad, but it's not actually bad. It's actually a good off-road vehicle if you don't, like, go into places that are, like, the mudding area. To in the beginning. Like, it's a really good vehicle. It has enough torque to get off, off the line. It has enough seats. It's kind of comfortable. It has good infotainment, I guess. I mean, infotainment system could have been reduced down so we can, like, have like, less weight. I mean, come on. Why not? We did it. And it's still able to do it well. Why is it like sometimes I do it differently? Like, this is an instance where I think it's going to be bad, but it's actually very good. How is it very good? Well... It is. Because here's the thing. It may be more than its competitors. It may have similar gas mileage where its competitors have like lower prices like $30,000 at the lowest. But it's still a good car, a good minivan. It could be a panel van. It can transport goods. It's a good off-roader. If only we could get, like, the torsion beam, but still make it, like, drivable. Because, like, the torsion beam is, like, really good. Why? Let's, let's go on the suspension test, shall we? We're going to go on this one. This one, and see. See, look. The torsion beam is very good. Because when one of it one of the wheels are up, the torsion beam moves up. What I say is like, it's not complicated really. But it's like, independently on its own. I know independent suspension works as well, but like, to think of it, it's a really good suspension setup. I was like, let's say you were like on a big, big block. So let's go here. This is very high. This is like the highest block. I'll go reverse and you'll see how like tilted it goes. It gets. It doesn't even like have any tilt. It tilts but it's not as much as the coil suspension. The coils just have more tilt to it. See? If anything, it's making it more smoother. And we have now, kind of... And safety and traction aids. Like, look. This is not supposed to be a fast car. But it is very comfortable. I would drive one of these as a first car. Not like as a car I would drive every day, but... Still, it's a good off-roader. It can be... It has potential to be an off-roader. If it had... Four-wheel drive. And yeah. That's a good review. Like... 
I thought it was going to be bad, but it's actually... Oh, wait. We're not done yet. Because we have forgotten one of the biggest things. The flight of stairs. And I'm sorry if you guys have your time extended. But anyways, we're going to go... On the flight of stairs. And I do think we did it. We did the flight of stairs already. I think. But we're going to do it again. Flight of stairs is like... Really good for like a vehicle to check like its suspension is good. See, suspension-wise, it's really good. I may have done this before in the video. Yeah, I do think I did it. I probably made a fool of myself by doing this again. But we're doing it again. And we lost a mirror, similar to the last time. Now all we have to do is just drive down the stairs. Get to the end. And there. I think that's a wordy car that I made. The car isn't the fastest. It can go to 138 miles per hour. Which is very quick. Because most of them can go like 100 and like 10 or like 20 miles per hour. This is like quicker. Which I don't know how. It's quicker than his competition, really. He gets off the line really quick. Like, this is subpar for a SUV, not SUV, a minivan like that, like this. So anyways, that's that's it for today, for the Root Visana. I thought I was, I was going to call it Visana, but it's a Visana. Yeah, let's, let's go check the name. Dia, Diasa. Well, not Sana, but Diasa. This Root Diasa is really not a bad car. But anyways, that's the end of today's video. I hope you like it. Bye, guys. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe, and please let me know what to build next.